morning or, or rather good afternoon uh afternoon. today we are going to spend some time to uh, continue on the boolean algebra um we will continue with mean terms max terms and we go into product of sum and sum of product and uh, after that uh next lecture we continue with uh, the uh truth tables and kanu maps so uh, i'm going to share the slides uh let me do this first uh, okay Now I'm going to share the slides. Uh, application window, slideshow. Okay. Now <clears throat> we are going to cover on mean terms and max terms. Okay. Let's say that uh, we have three variables x, y, and z, or or z. So therefore, we have Two to the power of three or eight different combinations. Okay, when the combination are combined with n, they are called mean terms. When the combination are combined with or, they are called max term. So let me do this. No, not on not white screen. This bit. Let me span. Okay. Mean terms is let's say you have x, y, and z. So basically, you have x, y, and z. So the combination is basically from zero, zero, zero until one, one. One. So basically, you have eight combinations all together. So two to the three, two to the power of three equal eight combinations. And the the max the mean term is when the combination are combined with an n. So basically, that you have uh, the combination is x and y and z. So this is called a mean term. This is a mean term. So in this case, let's say zero 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 means that x bar and y bar and z bar. So this is a mean term. Whereas for the max term, when the combination are combined with or, they are called max term. So max term is basically x plus Y plus Z. So this is called a max term. Okay, this is the max term, and this is the mean term. Clear. So this is actually. X bar plus y bar plus z bar. Okay. Any questions so far in this area? In, in this, in this side? No one. Eh? No. So there. that is the definition. No, so when, when the term when this. When the uh, we call it mean term, that means this year uh, combination n. If it's max term, the combination is all. Okay. So this is the table for the mean terms, product terms in which the variable appear once, uh, complemented or not. So let's say you have x, y, and z. So zero 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 one zero one zero up 
down to 111. So the product term or the mean term is that x bar, y bar, z bar, x bar, y bar, z, x bar, y, z bar, until x, y, z. So this is the product term or we call it mean terms. And the symbol that we use is M0. Uh, M1, M2, M3, M3, 4, M5, uh, M6, and M7. So for the mean term, we use the small letter as the symbol. Okay. So for n variables, there are 2 to the power of n mean terms. So this is the mean terms. Okay. Eh? It's very straightforward. So the sum of mean terms, this canonical form, is the standard product. Uh, determine the set of mean terms for which a function is 1, uh, the value 1. These are called mean terms of the function. So let's say that you have this. Uh, x, y, and z. So you have a function f1. So all mean terms are the combination with a plus of operation. For example, f1 is equal to x bar y by z plus x y bar z bar plus x y z. So this is actually a function in terms of the sum of mean terms. So this one mean terms, this second mean terms, and this third mean terms. So f1 consists of three, the sum of three mean terms. And this mean terms basically that x bar, y bar, z, this, the one that is 1, x, y bar, z bar, this is the one, and another one is x, y, z, so this is the one. So the rest are 0. So 0, 0, 0, 0 is 0, 0, 0, 1 is 1 for this one, 0, 1, 0 is 0 because there is no term there, 0, 1, 1, also not there, so it's 0. 1, 0, 0 is this one. This one. And the last one is 1, 1, 1 is 1. So this can be written as F1 is equal to the sum of sum, mean term 1, mean term 4, and mean term 7. Or can be written as M1 plus M4 plus M7. So this is the, what we call a sum of mean terms. If the question asks you to write in the, in the terms of sum of mean terms that you can write in this form, right? This, in this format, okay? Right? Any questions so far? No, very simple, straightforward. Now we go to max term. Max term is the sum term in which variable appear once, complemented or not. So this the same, uh, table just now, but the difference is that this is the sum term or in terms of max term. So 0, 0, 0 is x plus y plus z. So you see the difference? Uh, in the max, in the mean term, this is actually x bar, y bar, z bar. But in terms of the max term, is x plus y plus z. And the symbol is capital M, M0. So this actually, if you look at the max term, is the complement. Eh? It's the complement of the x. Complement of x plus complement of y plus complement of z. So x, x is 0 here. Whereas in the mean term, Zero is the x bar. So don't get confused. Eh? So you have x plus y plus z. Zero, zero, one is x plus y plus z bar. Zero, one, zero is x plus y bar plus z. Eh? And so on until one, one, one is x bar plus y bar plus z bar. So if you compare this with the previous one, this, you see? Okay. This use the bar for the mean term. For the max term, there is no bar, but it's a summation. So now, 
if you want to use to call it as a sum of maximum, the canonical form is the standard sum. For mean term, sum of mean term is the standard product. This one is standard sum. So determine the set of max term for which a function is zero value. If mean term is one value, this max term is zero value. Actually, all are uh, opposite. Uh, max term is the opposite of the mean term. Uh, these are called max term of the function. Must complement each literal. All max term are combined with a dot operation. And This, for example, this is the example previously, which is F1 is equal to X bar, Y bar, Z plus X, Y bar, Z bar plus X, Y, Z. So for the main mean, for the max term, we take the, the ones with the zero. So the function of F1 is that is actually x plus y plus z dot with x plus y bar plus z bar dot with x plus y bar plus z bar dot with x bar plus y plus z bar dot with x bar plus y bar plus z. So this can be written as the product of 0, 2, 3, 5, M6. So this can be written as M0 dot M2 dot M3 dot M4 M5 M5 dot M6. So this is really M0. This is M3. Yeah. This is one. Uh, this is zero. One. Two. This is three. This is four. This is five. This is six. This is seven. So you take the zeros. So M zero. Eh? This is M two. This is M two. Okay. This is M three. This is M5, this is M6. So this is the form of max term. So if the question asks to write the function in terms of max term, uh, so this is how you write it. Uh, these two, it's either this or this. Okay. How are the mean term related to max term? The mean term and max term with the same subscript are complements. It's complement each other. So this is the mean term bar actually equal to the max term like that. So let's say for example, max term three is Max terms, uh, mean term 3 bar is a x bar y z bar is equal to x plus y bar plus z bar. Let's say the x, y, z. Mean term 3 is basically is 1, 0, 2, 0. Right? Mean term 3. Mean term 3. Yeah. Mean term 3. Oh, yeah. Is 0, 1, 1. Yeah. Mean term 3 is 0, 1, 1. Right? Mean term 3 is 0, 1, 1. Oh. 0, 1, 1. one. One, three, mean term three. Eh? So this is M3. So M3 is actually, if you want to convert into uh, max term, 
we need to bar that, complement that. So when you complement that, so this is actually x bar y z. Then when you bar, is this. This is actually, remember from the De Morgan's rule? De Morgan's rule is basically x bar bar plus y bar y bar plus y z. z bar. Remember De Morgan's rule? So this becomes this. Okay. X bar bar is x, y bar is y bar and z bar is, and this is actually m3 here this see this x plus y bar z bar so this is the relationship between min term and max term so the complement of the min term is equal to the max term okay so now we go into the standard forms of Boolean expression, which is the sum of products and products of sum. So the sum of products is basically you are using the mean term or max term? Sum of products. Sum of product, max term. Mean term. Yeah, mean term. Because the product is X, Y, Z, right? So the sum of it, the sum of that term is a mean terms. The sum of the mean terms. The product of sums, so the basis is the sum, which is the max term. And we take the product of that product. So that is the sum of max term. So we have these two forms, sum of products and product of sum based on the mean terms and max terms. So standardization makes the evaluation, simplification, and implementation of Boolean expression much more systematic and easier. So by using this, uh, it makes the our simplification uh, uh, process become easier. Right? So the product terms is a term consisting of product of literals. So the product is the Boolean multiplication of literal variables of their components. So sum of product is formed when two or more product terms are summed by Boolean addition. For example, AB plus ABC. So that is the sum of products. So ABC plus CDE plus D bar C D bar. That is also a sum of products. A sum of product expression can also contain a single variable term as in A plus A bar B bar C plus B C D bar. Okay. So that is the different different form of sums of products. In a sum of product expression, a single over bar cannot extend over more than one variable. However, more than one variable in term in the term can have an overbar. For example, let's say if you have A bar, B bar, C bar, that is correct term for uh, sum of products, but not A, B bar, A, B, C bar. So this is the correct form. This is not the correct form. Because this one, actually, you can reduce to what? A bar. Plus, plus, B bar. plus B bar, plus C bar, B bar, C bar. plus C bar. Huh? Okay. So this is the correct form of a sum of products. So domain of Boolean expression is, is equal to a set of variables contained in the expression. For example, A bar B plus A B bar C, so the domain is basically A, B, C. This A, domain A, this domain B, this domain A, this domain B, and this domain C. So basically you have three domains. Eh? A, B, and C. Those are the domains. 
for this example we have a b c d e as the domain so there are three the domain is basically that a set of variable so the domain is actually a set of variable so the implementation of a sum of product expression simply requires ordering the output of two or more and gate so you end first then you or okay so for example this one a and b so a b then b c d and a c okay so this is the sum of product so you end first then you or so this is a product this is a product this is a product okay and you sum it okay. clear example any logic expression can be changed into sop form by applying boolean algebra technique for example so this one you have to remember the what to call it uh, the rules the basic rules uh, 1 to 12 uh, in previous uh, lecture so let's say you have an expression ab plus b or uh, n with cd plus ef so you you use the distributive uh, rule so ab plus bcd plus bef so this is the in the form of sop okay if you have a plus b or n with b plus c plus d then also distributive so ab ac ad bb bc bd you get this so from this sop actually you can convert into a a standard sop form what is a standard sop form a standard sop form is where all the variables in the domain appear in each product term so basically that in each term you have all the domains let's say for this example you have four domains a b c and d so for each term you have all the four domains okay this is a standard sop form and these are not standard sop form why because you have four domains here you have a you have b you have c and you have d but for this one you are missing c and d for this one you are missing domain b and d this one you are missing b and c this one you are missing a c d this one you are missing a and d this one you are missing a and c so this is not a standard sop so a standard sop must have all the domains in one product term like this all has the all the four domains so how are we going to convert this so this is the process of conversion is to convert product terms to standard sop basically that you use the rule number 6 first multiply each non standard product term with the missing terms using boolean algebra rule 6a plus a bar equal to 1 then you repeat standard 1 until all resulting product terms contain all variables in the domain example Let's say you have this boolean expression so this is not a standard form right and from here you know that you have how many domains you have four you have a you have b you have c and you have d so the so the domain is four 
So you take one term at a time. For the first term, you are missing D. Huh? A, A, bar, A, B bar C is missing variable D or D bar. So you multiply it by D plus D bar. So A, B bar C, then you multiply by D plus D bar. So you get A, B bar, A bar, C, D, and A, B bar, C, D bar. So you get these two terms. Okay. <coughs> now, you look at the second terms. A bar, B bar. Missing C and D. So first, you multiply with the C plus C bar. Okay, so you get A, B bar, A bar, C bar, C, and A bar, B bar, C bar. Second, you multiply by the D term. You multiply by the D term. So therefore, you get this four product term. So now you have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we have settled this and we have settled this. What about this one? This one, we have all the domains, right? A, B, C, and D. So we don't have to do anything about it. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, plus the original one. So this, actually, for this, 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 for this, And this one is this. So this is actually in the standard of product form for this. That's how you convert uh, from a non-standard SOP form into a standard SOP form. This can be in the test. So, Binary representation of a standard product term. Standard of, uh, of product expression is equal to one only if one or more of the product term in the expression is equal to one. For example, determine the binary values for which the following standard SOP expression is equal to one. So you have A, B, C, D plus A, B bar, C bar, D plus a bar B bar C bar D bar. So, solution. This term, this, all this can be one if this one is one or this one is one or this one is one or any combination of either this one and this one is one, this one is also one or all can be one. Eh? So for the first one, how can this A, B, C, D can be one? This can be one when all are one. When A is one, B is one, C is one, and D is one. So this term can be that. Okay, so one, 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 one can be one. What about this one? The second term. That this term can be one when A is one, B is zero, C is zero, and D is one. Because of this. Okay. And the third term, A bar, B bar, C bar, D bar, can be one when all are zero. Thus, the SOP expression is equal equals to one when any or all of the three product term is one. So this expression can be one, either this is one, either this one or this one, or can be all one or any combination. Okay. So that is the sum of products. 
So the next one is the product of sum, POS. This. What is POS? POS is basically the, a form where two or more sum terms are multiplied. For this is example. So this is actually a sum and this is another sum and these two sum end together. So this becomes a product of sum. This is a product of two sum. This one is a product of three sum. This one sum is another sum. This is a third sum and this is a product of this three sum. So this is called a product of sum. Like SOP, POS expression can also contain a single variable term. So it can be like this. This is actually a one term. So this is actually a product of three term, three sum term. So A, because A is actually like A that actually okay. so this is actually a sum term so this another sum term this another sum term a single over bar cannot extend over more than one variable so this is correct but this is not because this is actually a that so this is a correct sound term so the domain is the same domain is still is a set of variables contained in the expression so how many domain for this one you have a you have b you have c you have d you have e so you have the domain a b c d e and the implementation of pos is actually you all first you all first then you end Okay, so the first one is A or B, the second one is B or C or D, the third one is A or C, then you end. So this is the product of sum. So a standard form, a standard POS form is where all the variables in the domain appear in each sum term or in the expression. For example, this is actually a standard POS because you have you have four domain. You have A, B, C, and D. So all terms are present in the sum. So for this one, you have all four. This one also you have all four. This one also you have all four. So this is called a standard POS form. Any expression POS form which is not standard you can convert to become a sum term uh, to, to, to become a standard POS by adding each non-standard product term with a missing term using boolean algebra rule 8 if SOP you use rule 6 for the POS you use rule 8 which is a dot a bar equal to 0 Okay. And then you apply rule 12. Uh, A plus B C is equal to A plus B times A plus C. And you repeat this step until all the terms are until all the terms uh, contains all the variables in the domain. 
example. So you have this term. These are not standard POS and you want to convert. First, you look at how, how many domains that it has. A, B, C, and D. So you have four domains. So you look at the first term. A plus B bar plus C is not a standard POS form. And it's missing D. So therefore, this one, you add with a D dot D bar here. So you add. And from here, you use rule 12, which is A plus B bar plus C plus D times A B bar plus C plus D bar. So now you have this standard form, this standard form. Now you look at the number two, terms number two. Terms number one, this one is settled. This one is terms number two. B bar C plus D bar. So you are missing an A. A terms. So what you do? You add with A dot A bar. Then you use rule 12. So you get this and this. Now you look at the third term. Is this a standard POS form? Yes. It is standard POS form. So you don't do anything about it. So now you can rewrite the original expression into the standard POS form. So from here, so you get for this one, basically you get this and this. For this one, you have this and this. And for this one, you get this. So this is the Standard US form. Any questions so far? Very simple, very straightforward. Ada soalan ke? No, sir. No. Okay, now. Ada, sir. Ada, sir. Ada, sir. Saya tak nampak, sir. Yang 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 terms one. Ha? Terms 1 yang soalan tadi. Terms 1. A plus B bar plus C. Tak nak nampak apa ni? Okay. Tak. Ya. Yeah. Kan tak, tak faham. Yang sebelah lagi. Terms 1. Ha? Huh? Huh? Which one? Yang kan dia dapat A plus B bar plus C plus D darab D bar. Lepas tu macam ni dia kembang kan tu? Tak, tak perlu kembang. You you want to convert into a sum, a product of sum. From here, you see it here, you use rule 8. From here, you use rule 8. What is rule 8? You add with the d dot d bar. And d dot d bar, if you have this form, okay, you can apply rule 12 to write in this form. Rule 12. So basically that you have this one term. And another term is that this term. Oh, okay. Faham, faham. So, faham. Saya eh? nampak. Nampak. Okay. So okay. the same thing with this one. So when you write this, use rule 8. Basically, this one. And another one was that. This another term here. Yeah. This is actually uh, yeah. this one term, this one term. So you get this. Okay. So now binary representation mm -hmm. of standard sum term. A POS expression is equal to zero only if one or more of the sum terms in the expression is equal to zero. So remember, product of sum is actually related to the max term. So max term, we look at the term which is zero. So example, this is actually, we want to find which one make it zero. If SOP, we look at the one that is make it one. For POS, we look at that 
the expression which make it zero. So for this term, all must be zero in order to make it zero. For this term, for this term, okay, you look at, you need A to be zero, B to be one, C to be one, and D to be zero to make it zero. And this term, you need all to be one in order to make it zero. So the POS expression is equal to zero when any or all of the three sum is zero. It's either this zero, that zero, or the other one is zero to make it zero. Okay. So I just want you to cover to that part today. Truth tables, I'm going to cover later. Or you want to continue? You have a class, another class, eh? Yes, sir. At 2 and. Okay. So, any question? It's, uh, today is very straightforward. Betul, sir. Huh? Betul, sir. It is straightforward. The only thing is that you need to do some exercise. Lah. Yeah? Say, sir. You need. Say, kalau A plus B plus C bar, kita, kalau soalan tu bagi yang A plus B plus C bar. Mm -hmm. So, nanti dia akan, dia akan jadi A, B, C bar. Okay. It depends. Uh, soalan macam mana? Yang tadi saya cakap dekat product of sum yang cara tulis salah tu saya. Cara tulis salah? Ha, yang sepatutnya A bar plus B bar plus C bar. Dia bukan salah. Dia bukan salah. Is is actually is a non-standard form. For example like this. This is a non-standard form. Because it does not include all the domain. These are non-standard forms. All these are non-standard form. Oh. The standard form is when you have all the domains. For example, like this. This is not a standard form, but you want to convert into a... Uh, this is a standard form. This is a standard form because you have all the domain. A, B, C, and D. All the four domains. So this... But this process is actually for you to convert from non-standard to become a standard form. This example. This is a non-standard form and you will convert into a standard form. So you look at each term. This term. Does it have all the domain? Does it have all the domain? Uh, no. No. Because you are missing a D. So, you have to convert into standard form. How to convert? You use rule Plus 8. You use uh, rule 8, you add with a D, D bar. Because D, D bar is actually 0. It's actually as if you are adding 0 to this. Nampak tak? Nampak, sir. Nanti dia jadi D. Plus D, D bar. Yeah. Uh. Because after that, you use the rule 12. Okay? Okay, sir. So, any other question? You can hear one guy. Siapa tu? <laughs> Any other question? Because I'm not going to go through this yet. Or if you want, I can. Basically that I just want to cover that today. So this, uh, I leave it for after, after Raya. So this is actually, we go into uh, truth tables. How to create the truth tables in next term and mean term. Then after that, we use the Kano map. And how to uh, simplify the equation. So, it's the kind of map. Eh? 
Uh, we will go into uh, later. Eh, <coughs> macam. Macam pernah nampak lah. Any question? Mm -hmm. Any question? If not, I'm going to stop here. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, so we can stop here, right? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Yes. So, any question? No, sir. So, I'm not going to give you any new assignment uh, except that uh, whatever that I'm going to to put into the, what we call it, into your model lah. Eh? If there is any new assignment that, of course, there will be nine assignment that uh, as the, uh, uh, what I have put in previously, uh, the, the one that, that I'm going to, what to call it, um, modify some of the assignments, lah, eh? whether to add to add or to reduce. Eh? So hopefully that you can submit that uh, in due course, lah, eh? in due time. Any question? If not, I'm going to stop this uh, lecture and uh, Selamat Hari Raya. To all of you, maaf saya dan batin. If there are Selamat any, you, mm, if there are any uh, words that I say that uh, uh, terguris hati ke apa ke, tak ada, tak ada. Itu gurau-gurau eh. Itu tak marah. All, all is fine, sir. Uh? <laughs> itu gurau-gurau eh. Itu okay, sir. Uh, Uzbatun okay. ada? <laughs> ada, ada. 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 Selalu kurau dengan you eh. So so <laughs> dengan dia tu ya. Ha? I selalu kurau dengan you so jangan ambil hati ya. Eh. Tak ada pun sir. Ah uh, memanglah you memang kalut. <laughs> Tapi apa ni yang lain pun masih juga apa ni antar assignment dengan Tak ikut format yang nama file dia tak ikut format yang saya suruh buat. Ada saya ramai. Ikut dia. Siapa tu? Saya ikut Jawab saya. tu. Ha, ada, ada yang tak ikut. Hafiz tak ikut. Tapi nasib baik dia, dia tulis nama dia dengan nombor nombor apa ni lah. Dengan nombor metrik. Uh, nombor metrik tapi dia tak letak, letak assignment nombor berapa apa dia tak letak. Alamak. Aduh, oh, tak apa lagi ya. Hmm, ada a few lah. Ya, yes, apa ni? Oh, ada a few yang tak ni. Saya nak tunjuk boleh. Ha, <laughs> tengok. Kan telah macam ni. Ya, <laughs> saya tak tunjuk mana. Ada ke? Memang ada. <laughs> Let me see. Ya, saya sa. <laughs> Dan itu dia pengakuan yang pertama. Aha. Ni general break ni ah, selalu ke. Dia tulis dalam email dia aje. Ya. Mana dah. Eh, tak ada pula. Tak nampak lah. Dia tak nak saya tunjuk lah ni. <laughs> <laughs> tak nak saya tunjuk lah ni. Hmm. Tak apa tu. Dia dimaafkan. Selamat. Ni lah. Nampak? Yeah. Nampak? Ha, tengok nama file dia macam tu je. Oh, bukan saya, bukan saya. Dia jaga gender, gender break. 
<laughs> dia letak nama dia dengan tu ya. Assignment berapa dia letak dia tak letak. Dia letak dekat ah dekat sini ya saya kena baca dulu. So basically inilah saya letak kat sini tengok dalam tu so, terpaksa lah saya ubah balik nama file. Ha. Macam Vinoshan pula nama file macam ni je. So saya terpaksa letak dalam zip file ha. semua susun. Ha. Alia. Ha. Ha. Ini pembetulan yang dia hantar ni. Dia hantar gambar pembetulan dia. Nampak ke? Uh, assignment dia hantar. Lepas tu ada pembetulan dia hantar balik gambar. So saya simpan dua-dua lah. So siapa lagi? Ini assignment 3. Uzbatun ok. Ha, dia dah ikut dah dia punya ni. Ada lagi tak hantar? Ha, ramai lagi Ajam. tak hantar. Nama saya. Ha? Panjang oh. tu saya buat je. Ha? Panjang saya punya nama lepas tu. Ha. Sampai nama bapak saya saya pergi. <laughs> so, so saya dah hantar tu. Check tu. Siapa? Siapa saya cakap tu? Arif Najmi. Arif Najmi. Ha? Arif Najmi. Arif Najmi ni. Tengok. Uh... Banyak lagi yang saya tak uh, tak download. Sebab yeah. ruang tak lagi ke? Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> Tengok tak tahu lah. Tengok lah. Kat mana ada. Ini yang saya tak tak download lagi. Ha ni. Ha, saya tak download lagi. Nanti saya download saya masukkan lah. Okay, semua so, hantar lah. Bila dah siap hantar assignment. Right? So nanti saya akan masukkan dalam markah. Uh, sekarang ni saya belum masukkan lagi. So okay. Eh, benda lain pula keluar. So kalau tak ada apa-apa. Uh, uh, I will think. And um, see you on week of uh, 7th June and we are going to have a test maybe I will discuss with Dr. Azizi maybe we do on hari apa nak? Friday? Uh, nanti kita discuss sebab kita orang pun ada ada apa? Eh, takut bertepik dengan hmm. DE dengan dynamic sini. Okay. Tepik. 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 Bestnya. Until December. Oh sudah. Susah makan. Hah? Hmm. Susah makan ini. Susah makan kat sana. Betul. Ha. So basically all ah, macam ni lah. So that's why I keep continue doing the online lecture. So basically that uh, our lecture I'm going to use this apa ni uh what to call this uh, ms team and whoever did not attend the live lecture they can access in youtube eh huh? uh, i will put on the youtube and the link basically that i will put in the moodle eh huh? i will put the in in our e learning moodle guys too an assignment normally that i put uh, the question and what not in the moodle and you can download and you can answer at your own time and you submit through email eh? 
Okay. Sir. And whatever question that you can ask me through the WhatsApp. Eh? So we use all the whatever uh, channel that, that is available. Eh? You can uh, through MS Team, eh? which is uh, online lecture like this. Uh, you can use uh, WhatsApp eh? uh, for question and whatnot. Uh, our Moodle eh? uh, on e-learning. So we use the, uh, different different methods. Uh, what, whatever is suitable, what is able, what, whatever is easier for you uh, to access. Uh, any one of you that need to go to the town in order to download uh, soalan ke apa ke? Uh, ada ke tak? Ada mm. sir. Uh, semua boleh access daripada rumah? Ya yes, sir. Saya kena Sebab bergerak sikit. So, no. sebabnya uh, uh, I don't want to do online punya test because I, I know that uh, some of you uh, don't have the stable internet line and Betul, then sir. also you get uh, a lot of data punya ni lah charges so what we are going to do is that I will upload the question for the exam and you download the question then you answer uh, you write on your own handwriting yeah then uh, after certain hours you upload the jawapan whoever submit late daripada required time eh, akan apa ni uh, dapat kosong lah for the test for the final you have you for the final you have three hours Two hours for the face-to-face if, if face to face is two hours. So the faculty add an extra hours, jadi three hours. Uh, so if within that three hours, you have to answer and you have to return balik jawapan to me. Okay. Uh, so for the test one, we are going to do, uh, the test is one hour. And basically that I give you two hours. We are going to use the same method that we are going to use for the final. Basically that you can open the book, you can open the notes in order to answer the question. Write in your own handwriting. And the answer cannot be, uh, the cannot be what you call it, uh, exactly the same as you punya kawan-kawan. Because I know that within that two hours, uh, you you will be discussing with your uh, classmates and whatnot. Eh? That we know that that you you will do that. So basically, test one and test two uh, is considered as mock test for the final mock mock test in the sense that uh, we are going to check how we are going to monitor how are you conducting yourself when uh, doing the exam bukan dia mock in the sense that kita tak bagi mark kita tak tak kira markah no we use that markah for your uh, final marks so basically that test one test two plus your assignment plus quizzes that you have done will carry 50% as a carry mark and the final 50%. That, that will not change. Oh. Right? So, okay. uh, so, kalau you punya lecturer yang lain cakap kata it's a mock test apa semua, actually it's in that sense lah yang saya faham. Bukannya mock test as trial suka-suka nak tengok apa dia tak ada. Mungkin yang tu basically the trial apa semua tu I dah buat while you are doing the apa ni, the the quizzes. But this one actually will be more tougher lah because the quizzes I give you 24 hours. <laughs> but this one, uh, the faculty only give you actually uh, the normal face-to-face uh, punya time plus extra one hour. I was asking for 24 hours punya ni. Punya test, take home, take uh, apa ni, open book, open notes, 24 hours punya test. There are other faculty which uh, they buat macam assignment take about two days. Dia bagi dua, dua, dua hari. Betul, sir. Yeah. 
but uh, for our faculty uh, they have made the decision only add one hour to the uh, normal face to face final exam tapi saya takut takut apa kalau tak ajak saya kalau untuk awal saya menakutkan saya menakutkan basically that uh, the question uh, the way i see it Uh, it will not be harder than the normal face-to-face exam. My my intention to do a 24 hours basically that to make it tougher. So oh. that, so that uh, kalau you discuss macam mana pun you tak akan dapat jawapan punya kalau you tak tahu. I wanted to do that. Uh, to give a 24 hour test tak apa lah tak nak lah uh, 24 hour <laughs> but the faculty basically that uh, only allow additional one hour so in that case what I will do is uh, the uh, the question will be similar to the face to face exam and only with uh, minor minor changes lah. right okay Okay. okay There is no more question. Then uh, we stop here. Uh, since you have another class at two o'clock, so at least you have half an hour to prepare yourself. So thank you. Selamat hari raya. Maaf saya batin. Whatever salah silap, uh, saya minta maaf. Okay. okay bye bye. Minta maaf juga. Sama-sama. Okay. Now I'm going to stop the recording. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye.